So good morning, I'm uh, George Capanelli. I'm the co-founder of Age Nation, and uh, it's delightful to be here this morning. Um, we have uh, obviously a remarkable panel, both here with us, as well as uh, on the wall here in the Kiva, and live stream, we'll be getting uh, our guest panelists uh, directly. To set the stage for the program today, uh, I'm going to begin by sharing a quote uh, from the Dalai Lama. Uh, I love it because it really helps me to recognize that uh, I'm not alone in believing that the inmates somehow or another have gotten out of the asylum and are uh, <laughs> causing significant <laughs> challenge in the world around us, you know? Uh, uh, it, uh, this quote also helps me remember that uh, there's a critical step that each of us needs to take in our lives, and that step is to become much, much more responsible for our own wellness, our own health, our own self-care. And so uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about today and a lot of the experience our panelists will share with us is really about how we make that transition from depending on systems to paying attention to the requirements we have as individuals. So here's the quote by the Dalai Lama. It's called The Paradox of Our Age. Uh, we have bigger houses but smaller families, more conveniences but less time. We have more degrees but less sense, more knowledge but less judgment more experts and more problems, more medicine but less health, healthiness. We've been all the way to the moon and back but have trouble crossing the street to meet our new neighbors. Um, we've built more computers to hold more information, to produce more copies than ever but have less communication. We've become long on quality, um, uh, and these are times of fast foods, but slow on digestion. Tall men, but short character. Steep profits, but shallow relationships. It's time when there is much in the window, but nothing in the room. Isn't that an extraordinary quote? You know? Um, so that's why I believe we're here, why uh, we've gotten together to, to engage in this dialogue this morning. And uh, I do believe that it is our time to take much greater responsibility. So um, we have uh, panelists who are each going to share a little bit about who they are and their relationship to self-care and preventative medicine and preventative practices. And then we're going to open the floor up to a Q&A with those of you who are live here in the room, as well as those of you from around the world who are joining us via the live stream. Um, so I, I want to start by introducing uh, our real host and the founder of the Chi Center, Master Ming Tong Gu. Many of you, of course, who are online are really familiar with him. Um, I want to caution you, however, that uh, he's one of the most serious people that I know. Uh, uh, and uh, as some of you know, he rarely smiles and he almost never dances, you know? Uh, um, but he is a good man, I, I want you to know that. And we're really delighted to have him uh, with us today. So he does, uh, Master Ming Tangu does bring his exuberant teachings and extensive mastery to help all of us expand our ability to access our wisdom and our energy. Born and raised in China, he received extensive training in Qigong under Grand Master Pang at the largest Qigong medicineless hospital uh, in China. I think actually it's the largest in the world, isn't it, Ming Tang? Um, and if you don't know much about uh, Master Pang and his work over time in working with uh, Ming Tong, you'll learn a lot about the extraordinary gifts uh, that Master Pang 
evolved and that Ming Tong was fortunate enough to study. Um, he's mastered the unique ability to lead the collective energy field to accelerate personal and global healing. Uh, he was named uh, Qigong Master of the Year by the World Congress of Qigong and TMC. He leads retreats and workshops internationally uh, since founding the Qi Center, which is an extraordinary place. Uh, 80 acres of wonder here in Galisteo, New Mexico, and uh, hopefully you'll have an opportunity to come here and participate in person. And his mission is clear to all who meet him. He's committed to bringing wisdom, healing, Qigong to as many people around the world as possible. And in truth, based on his success to date, uh, he's well on his way to accomplishing that goal. Um, Sedina Capanelli is seated next to uh, Ming Tong. She's my wife. She's the co-founder of Age Nation, an award-winning author, sought-after speaker. She's designed and delivered consulting and coaching programs to hundreds of businesses, uh, the people who lead them, and over 100,000 people who have attended the public seminars, workshops, and retreats that she participates in. She's the creator of the portable uh, self-enhancement program, the author of a children's book called Everything's Exactly As It Should Be. Um, uh, she's also, um, uh, she's had the grace and the patience, actually, to co-author five books uh, with me. <laughs> Uh, uh, and I can attest to the patience and the grace. Uh, say yes to change, authenticity, do not go quietly, the best is yet to be, uh, and getting unstuck. Her lifelong commitment to the healing arts and her 25-year love affair with the practice of Qigong and other ancient and contemporary modalities serves as the basis for the work that she does uh, remarkable work that she does with women around the world. Uh, we're going, is Gabe on? Yes. So if we can go to the Zoom screen. There he is. Hi, Gabe. Hi, Gabe. So, hey, everybody. Uh, Gabe Hoffman co-founded Evolution of Medicine in 2014 with a mission to create a medical system capable of effecti effectively reversing, preventing, and managing chronic illness. Gabe began his journey into the health and wellness field through his personal battles with cancer as a teenager. After eight years as a holistic nutritionist and director of the premier holistic cleansing center in New York City, he partnered with Jane, James Maskell to focus on accelerating the medical evolution toward a more effective chronic disease management system. And if we can go to Lon, please. There he is. Hi, Lon. <laughs> Dr. Lon Hatfield, MD, PhD, is currently the vice chairman of the board of directors for Washington's Physicians Health Program. Following 40 years as an esteemed rural family practice physician, um, as an advocate for blending Western medicine with ancient and modern alternative therapies, he was drawn to wisdom healing Qigong uh, because he finds it effective in helping patients with chronic conditions for Western medicine has limited benefit from his experience and can empower people in their own health and healing journey. Uh, Lon obtained his PhD in biochemistry at Purdue uh, an MD at Iowa. In addition to his family practice, he's also served as the head of obstetrics uh, and president of the medical staff at Mount Carmel Hospital. Back here in the room, in the center, Dr. Erica Elliott, board certified in family practice and environmental medicine and practices here in Santa Fe. She has more than two decades of, ex of experience in successfully treating people with complex, perplexing chronic ailments. Dr. Elliott has lectured extensively on nutrition. Uh, she's been referred to as the health detective, uh, drawing from a wide range of disciplines, both mainstream and alternative, to diagnose and treat many different types of illnesses, often difficult to identify. 
She's the co-author of Prescriptions for a Healthy House. Um, and she's one of the biggest hearts and has one of the deepest <coughs> excuse me, commitments to healing of any physician that I've ever met. And I brought, she brought to Antarctica the seven continents. <laughs> 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 And there are penguins all over Antarctica that are just <laughs> celebrating. <laughs> These are the most amazing yeah. pictures. <laughs> so, Dr. Robin Benson, um, her mission has been fueled by the lessons learned and the wisdom and insights gained on her transformational 25-year journey as a doctor of oriental medicine and her travels to 70 countries to learn from indigenous people in addition to building a 21st century healthcare center, which is the home of 25 practitioners with a vision that is locally focused and globally expressed, and it's called Santa Fe Soul, yes? Uh, she started the self-care revolution to change the face of healthcare uh, uh, one person at a time. Dr. Benson also specializes in leading edge amplified regenerative therapies. I'm Italian, I have trouble with these words. You know. uh, designed to renew, restore, and revive patients' health. And lastly, uh, on the screen, at least, of the three Zoom callers, Ilka de Gast. Did she take another break? Ilka? <laughs> Hi, okay. <laughs> Ilka de Gast is a psychologist who specializes in mindfulness and body-centered therapy. In her work at large, a large medical clinic in Santa Rosa, California, she teaches wisdom healing Qigong to patients dealing with chronic health conditions. In the past several years, she's also started, started teaching wisdom healing Qigong as self-care to medical health care providers and staff. She offers patient, patients and staff this ancient practice of gentle movement, sound visualization, and meditation as a way to empower themselves and optimize health and wellness. Ilker is a certified level one instructor in wisdom healing Qigong. She's a student of uh, Master Ming Tang Gu. And here back in the room is Dr. Christopher Powell with almost 30 years of humanitarian service including in the U.S. Coast Guard, Air, Sea, Search and Rescue, Oakland County, ER, EMT, CPR instructor, Third World International Service Projects, Doctor of Chiropractic Holistic Manual slash Energy Medicine, and Kundalini Yoga teacher. Dr. Powell has integrated his experience in both worlds of emergency and complementary medicine, health, and wellness care. His postdoctorate advanced certifications include reorganizational healing and mastery systems coaching. Um, he has a passion to inspire, co empower, facilitate, and educate about underlying causes of pain and suffering and how to get your life back on track. He's currently director of a deep healing retreat center called Sanctuary of the Stars here in Galisteo, New Mexico. So, that's our panel. Let's give them a hand, shall we? And now, beginning with Ming Tong, each will share a little bit about their practice and their relationship to self-care and preventative medicine. First of all, welcome you, everyone, all the friends here locally and also friends non-locally. And this is a truly international event, you know, really sharing this message, the message of uh, health and healing, the message of self-care and deeper empowerment. And I was not expecting George have a, such an extensive introduction, but I'm happy he did it because <laughs> <laughs> really, you know, for us to know such extensive experience of these panelists, not so much of everybody's resume, but really give me a sense of, wow, what a journey everybody have, you know, taken. So today is really one of the goal for us is here to share this journey with all of you together. 
you know, I know every one of you out there, whether you locally in person here or non-locally, you know, through the virtual uh, space, internet, um, you have your own journey, you have your own story, you have your own desire, deeper inspiration. And the fact you, you're connecting with this webinar, I think something inside of you is really calling for, calling for a deeper, you know, deeper, let's say, connection, deeper connection. So when we come into, you know, health, there's so many options available. We're going to hear, you know, many different gifts from this panel. But more importantly, I want to really suggest uh, to uh, my wish for all of you is discover what is most important for you. What is really health? What is truly healing? What is the wholeness of mind, body, heart? Yeah. So whatever way, you know, when, when thoughts I had is like, wow, after I hear everybody's journey, story, we could have just spend, you know, two days, whole weekend, just talk about, you know, what do we know. And so in whatever this brief times, we're going to share just briefly, but more, um, the, my deepest wish is for you to, you know, take uh, your healing to the next level. So whatever you have been exploring, you really um, discover, you know, what is most important for you in your next step. So, of course, you know, I'm specialized uh, in wisdom healing Qigong. I'm not going to, you know, get into a long story of my own journey, but uh, briefly, really share what I have discovered continuously through my own journey, but also working with thousands, thousands of people, you know, over the years. Um, so, especially, you know, I just came back from a three weeks uh, trip and almost two weeks in Israel, then in Omega, and working with these people really um, continuously to be most inspiring. It's like recognizing, you know, as you know, Dalai Lama's quotes indicating, on one hand is, uh, you know, what amazing challenge we are facing. Yeah. On the other hand is recognizing the deeper need, deeper calling for health and healing. Yeah. And then also recognizing is like, a, um, you know, over the years I take him for granted what a wisdom healing Qigong is. Yeah. But recognizing so many out there, not only not knowing what this is possible, this new way of healing, new way of creating health for yourself is possible. It's not knowing even how simple, how direct this kind of practice is available for everyone. So that give, at the same time, it's like uh, amazingly powerful when people show up without any experiences from different culture, different background, from different diagnosis, different stories, you know, whole baggage of things, not just baggage of medicine, but baggage of stories, baggage of impossibility and stress, you know, all that conditioning yeah, we have including the condition of a healthcare system in general. Yeah. So suddenly, when you do the practice, realizing, oh, I can make a difference now. Yeah. I can uh, you know, really empower myself to take care of myself to make change no matter whether it's for you know, uh, preventive reason, also healing of chronic condition, no matter how severe it is. Yeah. So I just want to begin to share you know, three things um, we continue to discover when people come to Wisdom Healing Qigong as a self-healing, self-care, self-empower modality. First is uh, you're going to discover you have a body. <laughs> <laughs> you have a body. <laughs> including the people sitting on the panel. <laughs> including myself, including you, wherever you're sitting, wherever you are right now. You have a body. I can talk about that for another hour, but the question, that um, invitation for you to reflect on what that means. And the second discovery is that is your own body. Not only you have a body, 
but this is your own body. It's not a body of a medical book. It's not a body, you know, as being told by doctors, by, you know, healers, by your teachers, by your parents. It's your own body. And that means you have more access to your own body internally, more than anyone on this planet Earth, as far as I know. <laughs> if you want to go as far as to the universe, you can. <laughs> but let's put it in that scale, in that perspective. You have the most access to your own body than anyone in the universe. And the third message is when you discover, access your body, realizing your body is more than a biological, chemical machine, more than just a vehicle for the spirit, even more than certain analogy we use as temple for sacred essence of who we are. This body containing everything who we are. Yeah. So this body is containing not only the physical aspect, but a subtle energetic aspect. Also all our emotional, you know, world, and also our spiritual energetic field. This body carry all the imprints of the past in the personal level, as well as the universal level, and carries all the potential, creative potential. Everything that you are longing for, yeah, including health, is all there inside of you. You know, the quality of uh, loving kindness and the joy, compassion, creativity, wisdom, and health vitality, it's all here inside of you. It's waiting for you to discover. It's waiting for you, only you, to discover for yourself. So the true gift of uh, wisdom, healing, qigong for me, and have been so passionately share about it, is the most powerful tool. Allow me to discover all these three layers, three layers. So as a result, you're enhancing, you're empowering, you're expanding, the capacity of mind, body, heart. And that's healing. And that's health. And that's his ongoing responsibility, ongoing joy of connecting with yourself, awakening to the wholeness. So I'm so looking forward to hear, you know, um, everybody's uh, <laughs> journey and experience. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, um, and for creating this incredible center where we can all come and, and practice and, and just immerse ourselves in. It's a, it's a real gift to our community here. And all of you out there, thank you for being here. I'm really excited to be a part of the Qigong and Conscious Aging movement, right, that we're in. <laughs> And this is a new paradigm shift. It's so incredible and it's so needed uh, to take us away from the outdated um, total reliance, anyway, on doctors and on out, you know, sources that are out there and changing the focus to an inner directed focus for self healing and taking responsibility for our own lives. And that's, as Ming Tong was saying, as George said, that's really what's needed in our world right now for each one of us, for each one of our bodies, right? So um, there's a quote I really love. It says, the bad news is time flies. The good news is you're the pilot. <laughs> and I love that because we are in an evolutionary shift and we are pilots. We can pilot our lives and come into a deeper connection with our, our connection with the unlimited source of being. Let's face it, you know, scientists tell us that we are part of this quantum field of unlimited uh, energy, right? 
So they've already told us. It's, it's proven now. So we can, we can buy it, OK? <laughs> we can, we can relax to into it. Yeah, we can have permission now. So we're in new territory. And in order to navigate this, these new you know, uncharted waters that we're in, we really do need some updated tools, some updated skills to get us through this time so that we are vitally alive and well and so that we can thrive as we age. You know? um, and we are all aging, <laughs> everyone listening out there. <laughs> So that's why Qigong, I think, is so valuable, so preventative. Such a well of well. Uh, it's like, for me, a portal of wellness. So that we can take our health back into our own hands. We can take that control. I had an experience of this many years ago. Um, I had a very challenging time. I hit a real bottom. I don't know if anybody out there has ever had that. but. For me, it, it was devastating. And I gained access to these incredible esoteric ancient practices and began practicing diligently. And within a matter of a few months, my everything turned around, everything. And I can say that the practice of Qigong literally changed my life in so many ways. And along the way, I added contemporary and integrative energy practices, um, a lot of different things beautifying techniques. I had to add that. I was an actor. And um, all kinds of things that would, that would really help me, longevity techniques. And that became a life wellness practice that I integrated into the corporate work that I was doing with George, with organizations. And now it's part of everything we do with H Nation, all our programs, all our events. And at the bottom line of it, the bottom construct of it is, is Qigong, really. And so I actually would not have my purpose, such a strong purpose, to support people, to uplift people in the second half of life if it weren't for Qigong. So it actually gave me a purpose. And that's a benefit when we are whole that we get to have. We come alive to life, and, and we want to fulfill our purpose. And you know, wholeness is our birthright. It really is our birthright. And even in this preventative, um, I have notes here because I know I'll go over five minutes if I don't keep, keep with these notes. But we have this changing healthcare environment. And being in this is, you know, it's pretty amazing. We're also uh, in the tsunami of aging. Um, we're an age nation. We talk about uh, the demographic shift. We're over. Half of our population will be over 50 years of age for the first time in history. And this is all at one time. This is with industrial, industrialized countries all around the world. So even with that and the health care, uh, so life care situation and everything that's going on, um, we can still yeah. claim our wholeness, right? We still have the power to claim our own wholeness. And when I think of the tsunami, it was talking about the tsunami of aging, I think of that tsunami that devastated everything. And you remember there were so, there, I was always amazed by those trees that stood strong and tall. And why? Because they had deep roots, they had a real foundation. And for me, that's what Qigong is. It gives us a foundation, a real support, an inner directed support system so that we can be strong. And um, from really, it's from the inside out. So w we can start wherever we are. We just start from the beginning like I did with a simple practice. Because a simple gesture can be the beginning of a lifetime of self-care and self-love. And I just wish that for every one of you, everyone here and everyone listening, that, that you can experience that. And start wherever you are, because wherever you are is perfect. We can just accept wherever we are and begin from there. And, you know, I think of Ram Das. He said, we're all here to walk each other home. So let's do this together. Really glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks. Hey, 
I, I guess I'm next. I, I wasn't sure of the order. Uh, well, uh, in my int introduction, you know, they, they mentioned a bit about my own journey. Um, you know, when I was 17, having gone through the Hodgkin's disease and, and 19 and kind of going through the conventional healthcare model, um, then at a certain point, uh, turning, ma taking it, making a change, you know, the message that we get from medicine and the message that I got at that time was there was nothing I could do that would impact my health. I had to depend on, um, I had to depend on doctors basically to tell me whether I was going to live or die and they would do their best to give me the best shot and we'll see what happens. At a certain point uh, on that journey after coming out of um, basically a coma for 10 days and, and sort of starting to, to rally, uh, I came home after a stem cell transplant and my, my family, uh, we decided to start to pursue a more uh, holistic approach um, we had heard some people were taking vitamins and, and, you know, and so with really nowhere else to turn, that's what I started doing. You know, if I, I fast forward, I mean, that was uh, 17 years ago, but I think the real turning point there was that I became empowered to take care of myself. For the first time, I, I found out that there was something I could do that was going to impact my health. That began a journey where I went back to school. I became an integrative practitioner. I, I worked with people for 10 years. And then now um, I've left that and, and I'm sort of uh, one of the leaders of a community of right now 50,000 doctors and practitioners who are in functional medicine and lifestyle medicine and um, are really what we hope becomes the, the future of primary care. And uh, it's, it's been a, an interesting journey getting from there to, to here. And, I, and I've spent more than half of my life as either a patient or a practitioner and, and in one of those seats. Um, and, and, and now working with this community. So, so what I see from it and, and what I've learned is that the biggest shift we can make is to leave the paternal uh, the paternalistic healthcare model of a patient comes in to see a doctor and the doctor is sitting on this pedestal and he's going to tell you whether you're going to live or die. And it's the doctor has all the power. We are shifting into a new, a new medicine model, which is patient centered. It's about empowering ourselves, about empowering patients. And it, and it really depends on having the right relationship between creating the right relationship between practitioner and patient and understanding what our role is. On some level, you know, personally, we all are living our own hero's journey. And I know with the community that's, that's on here, you guys have heard this, this mythology and this story before, and we all have, and we're all living it. And the doctor, um, I think, has been positioned unfairly as the hero in most people's healing journeys up until now. And the truth is, it's not the doctor. The doctor is a guide and is a support or the practitioner is a guide or is a support. And the truth is, we're all guides and supports to each other. But we're all living our own story and our own journey. And so empowerment is what the future of medicine is. It's about educating people. Uh, it's about creating the right relationship between ourselves and our and, and medicine. So um, when we speak to doctors and the doctors in our community, they're understanding that and they're educators. So, so a lot of what we do uh, at the evolution of medicine is help the doctor educate people, but do it in a way that doesn't just come out of their time because the doctor is also has their own life and needs to create a lifestyle that works for them and their family. So what's amazing is as we all become empowered individually, medicine is actually going to be able to spread and scale very differently than before. And the cost of medicine is going to come down significantly because like Ming Tang said, we have responsibility for this body. And by taking responsibility, and when I took responsibility for my own health, that was the most empowering thing I ever did in my life. Um, I think sometimes we can struggle with feeling guilty. Like if I'm responsible, then it's my fault that I don't feel good. 
But the other side of that coin is it's also you're the one who can make, you know, who can heal yourself. So there's a lot of power in that. Of course, we all need each other. Of course, we all need connection. Of course, we all need guide, guidance. But how can we do this in a smarter way? And how can we change the paradigm of how medicine is delivered? And that, that's across the board. So um, along that journey, you know, I, I've obviously I've done many things with my diet, with nutrition, with, I mean, I, I've been involved in, in every approach. It's been the majority of my life. And I would say that all of it is important. But as I've, for my own personal healing, as I've been exposed to Qigong and have embraced uh, the wisdom healing Qigong specifically, that has been the most profound and empowering medical intervention I've made to this point. Um, it, because it is the only thing I've seen so far that is just between me and myself. It's not even about a supplement I'm taking. It's not even about a, um, something that's being recommended to me. It's not an outside treatment. Now I still utilize those things, but to every day come back to something that is just between me and myself, it's my own relationship to myself and my body is so empowering. And it's also so cost effective that I don't see any way the future of healthcare evolves without incorporating this type of thing. You know, in functional medicine and, and um, lifestyle medicine, you know, we, they talk about stress as a piece of the pie. And, you know, you have sleep and drinking water and your foods, your relationships and stress. But the reality is stress is the entire pie. And all of these other pieces are different types of stress. But Qigong has the ability to work on stress differently than any other intervention. So um, I've been very grateful to come across this as I've been continuing on my journey and, you know, look forward to seeing how we integrate this into medicine. But I, I feel very confident and very hopeful that we are and, and, and having the right relationship. I think Qigong establishes that relationship and it's something that we can teach patients and we can teach each other uh, as we come into a community together, all with... Um, personal responsibility for our health and our journey, as well as the ability to share with each other. So uh, yeah, I appreciate getting a chance to speak here and, and sharing some of this and uh, thank you. Can we, uh, can we go to Juan next, please? Good morning, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Well. It it's been a delight to hear the different people uh, speak so far, and Gabe was talking about how empowering this can be. As a family practice doc for 40 years in a rural area, I remember back when family practice was started, and we talked about preventive medicine and lifestyles and things like that, but we never really seemed to get to where we wanted to be with all of that. And so medicine, as I've experienced it over the years, has been primarily disease management. It's great for emergencies. It's great for acute problems, but it's really uh, pretty limited in dealing with chronic disease problems. And as George and Sadino were talking about the aging nation that we have, we have a lot of baby boomers that are coming into this place of saying, I want to look at my longevity and how I'm going to deal with that. And medicine clearly doesn't have a pill for your longevity. But we, I think, have seen that 75 to 90% of our illnesses are lifestyle created. But people have been very confused as to what should I do to help my own decisions. And we've disempowered people in, in the sense of what Gabe was talking about that is with all of the information that's out there, that we don't know what to do as a nation, what to eat, what kind of exercise to do. Everybody's trying to promote some type of this or that for a person. So let me go back to where I see the issue. And that is that if we are going to re-empower people to take decisions for themselves, I would go back to my experience a year ago with Ming Tong. And that experience was generated 25 years ago, actually, when 
A mutual friend asked me to have dinner with Effie Chow, who I think was the first female master Qigong person in China who came to the United States, and she's still practicing Qigong and teaching. And I wanted to learn Qigong, but I wanted to learn it from a person that really embodied Qigong, not from somebody that was going to treat it like another exercise program at the gymnasium. All of those are good, but I wanted to get it from somebody that really embodied it. And a year ago, a good friend of ours who is a teacher of wisdom healing Qigong said, you really need to meet Ming Tong. And in my uh, Western scientific hat, I said, sure, you know how this is. And um, <laughs> we went to a workshop. And that's really the only way to, or the best way to, to first become aware of it. And even though my wife and I don't seem to have any real medical problems, we went to a workshop that was for neurologic diseases. And it was a week-long workshop where we were able to firsthand experience what people were experiencing during their week with chronic diseases like Parkinson's and chronic fatigue and autoimmune deficiencies and all of the different things that people brought to that workshop and within a week noticing how much they were empowered to make progress and decrease their pain, increasing their joy in life. People that are in Qigong just seem to have a great joy in, in what's going on and the happiness that, that, that we see. So out of that, we learned about the program that people can very easily learn it's not that easy to get into the depth of it, but with practice can learn that both with computer online programs and my thinking is that the best thing is to do it in a workshop to start out this. But what we do know is that physicians specifically have about a 60% burnout rate right now. And so to ask a physician to also learn about Qigong is really challenging because they're dealing with overwork and overwhelm and burnout a lot. And so to bring in another program for them to learn is very challenging. But my experience with this is that this is a well-researched, well-grounded program. The Medicineless Hospital in China has over 3,000 published research papers where people would come into the hospital be diagnosed with medical doctors at the hospital so they knew what they were really dealing with when they came in. And then a month later would have a repeat examination to see what changes took place with remarkable responses in uh, chronic disease that don't have any uh, treatment in our Western medicine. So we saw that that was a very powerful thing for people and I think that the physicians and healthcare providers have been looking for something that can support and uh, supplement everything else that the people are already doing in a way that really makes sense for them, that really empowers them to make good choices in their own healthcare. So my sense is that from the uh, time that we spent with uh, Wisdom Healing Qigong, it's the one program out of many that are very good. And, and uh, Roger Yankee said, what, in response to what Qigong program should I do? Well, oh, the one that, that's right there in front of you, do that one. But if a person doesn't already have a practice that they're doing, getting started with something like Wisdom Healing Qigong has the best research and the most published data behind it with the 5,000 years of history that supports this, this, this new uh, program in the United States that Ming Tong has brought to the United States and teaches very well with, with uh, joy and, and it's just fun to be around the, the people. And then you see the dramatic successes that I've personally seen for my wife and myself, just our own health was good to begin with, but it just improves and the joy and, and happiness in life is just uh, wonderful to watch. So uh, what I can do is simply roundly uh, encourage people to learn more about this 
and to make their own choices, I think the best way to do it is to go to a workshop. That that really uh, lets you dive deep into it quickly and have the benefits that come out of it uh, immediately. So it's a delight to be on the panel. Thank you. Dr. Elliott. My name is Erica, and um, it's very inspiring listening to the speakers. When I was a conventional doctor at one time, can you believe that? <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and I paid back my National Health Service Corps obligation because they paid for my medical school. I had no money. I had just come back from the Peace Corps. So I owed them service in a remote area, underserved. And so I became the medical director at Cuba, New Mexico. And many of my patients were Navajo. I spoke Navajo because I had been a school teacher right out of college on the Navajo reservation at Canyon de Chelly. And so when these old women would come in, um, I, <laughs> I would talk Navajo to them and just like put them in complete shock. <laughs> and uh, but then they would talk very more relaxed with me since I spoke their language. And they would talk about Ezechini. And that means, that's a reference to us white doctors as opposed to Khatkhali, which is a huge compliment, means Khatkhalis are medicine men who really do meaningful healing where they reconnect the patient with their community, with their own spirit, and with the natural world. And whereas we were called this pretty awful word called azehini, it was awful because of what it meant. It meant he who gives out pills. <laughs> 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 and I thought, oh my God, that's, that's, that's what we're all about. <laughs> that's really horrible. But I, I didn't have a choice. I, I, there was no place to be a more thoughtful, alternative type of practitioners. I, at times, in a 24 hours, would see up to 60 patients. As you can imagine, I became a pill dispenser. You have a sore throat, hear this. You can't sleep, take this. You're anxious, take that. And I knew that this was an awful way to practice medicine, but there was nothing I could do about it for the two years of service that I owed there. But it really planted something in my mind that this is exactly how I never want to practice medicine. But then um, I sort of, after I completed my service, I sort of found myself in corporate medicine still practicing that way. And then, like Gabe, I had a disaster which saved my life. And it was a horrible disaster. I got chemically injured by some horrible chemicals that were used in the clinic, like chlorpyrifos pesticides, which are known to cause brain damage. And given my genetics, that I don't detoxify very well, I became brain damaged, and I had all systems were terribly impacted. And I became really disabled, but I still had to practice medicine because I needed to support my baby. I was a single parent. And so um, I had to leave that toxic building and another organization, Women's Health Service, asked me to come work for them. And I said, well, you know, I'm brain damaged. And <laughs> they said, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> They said, patients will love you. <laughs> <laughs> and patients really did like me, and even though I wasn't home upstairs, and I think it's because I, since I couldn't use my brain, I used my heart. And some patients, actually, who had known me for many years, one of them said, I, Dr. Elliot, I don't want you to take this in the wrong way. I'm trying to pay you a compliment, so don't take this in the wrong way. But 
I like you better since you're brain damaged. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I said, what? And she said, you're coming from your heart. And I know you really feel me, even though your brain isn't working. And that means a lot to me. And plus, you're the only doctor that's ever really listened to me. <laughs> and I got that from a lot of people. So the clinic got so popular that they had to expand. And then I thought, oh, shoot, they're going to remodel. Now it's over for me. Well. They did remodel, and they tried to use all non-toxic um, products. Is it Sorry. over? No. <laughs> My five minutes is over? No. <laughs> okay, so, um, so they tried their best, but when I went in, they had a sealer. They had used a sealer over the whole thing, and I almost passed out. And so that was it for me. So I thought, oh, wow, now I'm going to be a bag lady, but I can't. I have to support my son. What am I going to do? I can't go in public buildings. I'm one of those people you read about that can't go anywhere, can't do anything, and you think they maybe have psychiatric problems. And I was one of those. And so I, I just uh, stayed in my house thinking it's over for me. I'm going to have to farm out my son and sell my house and uh, give my son back to his father. And so it, it was just gut-wrenching. And then all of a sudden, these people started knocking on my door and saying they wanted to come in and have an appointment in my house. And so, and so I said, well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm brain damaged. And they, they said, can we still come in and have an appointment? <laughs> And so that's how my practice started in 1993. The first patient came and sat on my living room, and I, I couldn't track her. My brain was so damaged, but I made intense eye contact to compensate. And, and uh, I tried to feel her from my heart, and I, I cried when she cried and so forth from her terrible story. She'd had a similar story as mine. And then suddenly she said, are we done? And I didn't even know if we were done. <laughs> so I said, I guess so. And she said, I want to pay you. I said, well, I haven't really done anything. <laughs> and so she said, you don't get it. You've done more than any other doctor I've seen. You're the only doctor that's really ever cared about me and listened to me. And she pulled out a $100 bill and that was how my practice began. And so I learned environmental medicine, and then I actually had more than just my heart to offer the patients. I had some really useful information, and that's when my whole life became about empowering my patients. I wanted so much for my patients to feel good, and I wanted them to take their health in their own hands. So I shared with them everything I knew about how to have a full, meaningful life. And I addressed every issue of their life, their spiritual issues, their diet, uh, their connection with nature. I, I used every tool, even including tools that I learned from the Navajo Indians. I learned tools from all over the world. And and one of the tools that I used uh, with my patients who had been traumatized, I, I attracted people. My, my practice exploded because, they, because when they heard there was a doctor that... Was brain dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, had I had a big heart. Her, her brain had started to come online now. So now I was connected, head and heart were connected, yeah. and I could practice as a full human being and give my humanity to my patients. And they knew it. They trusted me, and I wanted to be worthy of their trust. And um, so... So one of the methods I used for traumatized patients, and I seem to really attract patients who's been massively traumatized, either by the medical world, by their own bodies, by their family. 
in many ways they had been traumatized and suffered from chronic anxiety disorders. And some came to me after having horrendously bad experiences with mainstream medicine. And so they were, they were uh, gun shy uh, and uh, very fearful. So one of the things that I've done, which really works well, is I have them stand up with me and do lift chi up and pour chi down. Oh my God. It, <laughs> it totally works. And <laughs> I can guarantee no matter how anxious, nonstop talking, uh, just so nervous, um, they calm down and they're really ready to listen. And what I'm all about, just like Gabe, is I'm all about empowering my patients, uh, empowering them with all the tools I know about, but also uh, empowering them like to stop blaming, to, to take responsibility in a good way. And some of my patients, as I was sharing with Mariel, some of, a few of my patients are narcissistic do, because of their upbringing. They've not received love or kindness or tenderness. They've re really received either just indifference, coldness, or outright abuse. And so they don't care about gratitude and empathy and so forth because they never received it. They don't know how to do it. So I, I go at it through the narcissism. I say, you know, when you blame your husband, uh, you know, you're actually weakening yourself and you're giving him all that power. Do you really want to do that? Give him all <laughs> he, has, he has power over you. So anyway, um, I will end here. And I'm very happy to be here. And I've got lots of uh, things I'd like to share with you about conscious aging, like the brain, how we can help protect our brain with the latest research is pretty darn exciting. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I haven't seen you like three years since we met. And you're a new person now. You're a complete new person. I remember how you came to the first I workshop. I was sick from another accident. I yeah. had two disasters. That's to make sure I really understand amazing, suffering. Amazing, <laughs> amazing, amazing. It's my PhD, postgraduate degree in how to survive suffering and get to the other side and help, yeah. other, and help other people. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. How lucky am I to live in Santa Fe? having doctors like Erica next door to work with and share patients with. So 25 years of practice, it's been quite an amazing journey. And I'm really grateful because I've learned so much from my travels and I get to bring that into my practice. And it was part of the inspiration for creating Santa Fe Soul Center for Optimal Health. You know, a place where you walk in and you're greeted by a prayer wall that represents all healing and all spiritual traditions. And I think that's an important place for people to really feel received. And self-care, you know, I have to say, I guess it was like my 20 years of just seeing so much unnecessary suffering on my tables. I thought, you know, I'm going to start a self-care revolution because I think of all the revolutions out there, we start with ourselves, is, is an important one. And for the, the message that's so important is that self-care is a way of life, not an event. For a lot of times we need, right? And very often it's, it's having a wake-up call of some sort. And it's, it, that's really been kind of the place in which I like to work with my patients is this place of empowerment too, that taking care of self in, in all the levels, from how you wake up in the morning to how you express gratitude, to how you're nourishing yourself from the earth, how you're creating a healthy electrical system. I know you talked about we are a body. And for our biological, bio, biology and our chemistry to work really efficiently, we need a healthy electrical system. And there's no better place to, to get that restored than being outdoors. And I, too, have been so grateful from practicing Qigong 
and other types of movement exercise and being a long-time runner, but just cultivating that healthy way in which our energy is moving throughout our body is so essential because, again, so much of disease doesn't have to happen in the first place. And as we look and see our friends and loved ones um, on a day-to-day -day basis go through their own journey, you know, we look within ourselves and say, what, what could I do differently in my own life? How do I want to show up for my loved ones? And I just want to say I'm a mother of um, a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old, and I treat children a lot. And I, I am, I'm concerned about our children, you know, in today's world more than just about any population. We are, are an aging population, but we're also living in this digital, digital, digital age, which is rewiring, that's wiring their brains in a certain way. And so I think it's something to really talk about today as we talk about aging um, and knowing that youthful aging is a choice. But, but I think I'd like to make sure we, we cover that today. And I just want to say what I'm most excited about, Gabe, um, being a functional medicine doctor, and I'm among, you know, this amazing tribe of people that are really coming from the heart, that we're really here to help people change the trajectory of their lives through self-care, through getting to the root cause of what's going on. But this whole emerging field of regenerative medicine is so exciting, which is really the science of, na of using nature to heal naturally to restore damaged tissues, under-functioning endocrine systems and, and immune systems, that we can do it. We can do it. We don't have to rely on prescription drugs or have a lifestyle of always having to make that choice. So regenerative medicine is, is really exciting. It's something that I get to practice using people's own um, platelet-rich plasma to restore joints, hair growth, sexual regeneration, just to know that youthful aging, I'm going to say that again, again, youthful aging is a choice, right? And to really want to live. That's another thing I just want to say about treating patients is getting people back in touch with their why, their purpose, because without that, you know, we as facilitators in people's health, it's, if, when that's not there, that's, it's a real challenge. challenge. So for, for all of you that are listening, to really, when you think about your aging process or how you're waking up and how you're feeling every day, to really feel that desire to be alive and live the best life possible. Thank you. Can we, uh, can we go to Elka, please? Hello. Hi, everyone. So wonderful to hear everyone's story, to see, to see Ming Tong and all of you there. Um, so I'm a psychologist, as George mentioned, and um, I'd like to share with you a little bit about how Wisdom Healing Qigong has, uh, how I've been using it for my own health and self-care as a psychologist, and also with my clients in a clinical setting. So I work in a large medical clinic in Sonoma County in California, and we serve 50,000 patients on an outpatient basis. And I work with patients with emotional and physical health conditions, depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, addiction, substance use disorders, HIV and AIDS, and many different, different conditions. Um, so I've been a psychologist for 10 years, but what I was realizing four years ago is that I really started to feel very overwhelmed myself um, in my work. And at the time, things were feeling so overwhelming uh, with the uh, increase of focus by the clinic on productivity and seeing more clients and have less time to see clients and then also the vicarious traumatization of working with patients and listening to these uh, very, very difficult stories all day long. So four years ago, I was thinking, I don't know if I want to continue with this. This is, uh, I don't know if I love my patients, but I don't, don't know if I can do it. 
And before that, I had worked with meditation and energy healing and various forms of sound healing. So I was, I was working uh, with those modalities. Um, but I was thinking of getting out of the, the field and changing careers. And that's when one day when I was in Petaluma, where I live, I bumped into Ming Tong at a coffee shop. <laughs> so Ming Tong used to live in Petaluma before he, before he changed his home to Galisteo in New Mexico. He was in Petaluma. So I met him at our favorite coffee shop, the best coffee shop in Petaluma. And then uh, started to hear about wisdom healing Qigong. And very quickly, I immersed myself in the uh, practices and learning the Qigong and went to as many workshops as I could find uh, that Ming Tong was teaching and joined the professional program. And I was finding slowly that the overwhelm and the burnout were uh, feeling better, that I was getting through this. So at the same time, I started working with the Wisdom Healing Qigong with my patients, uh, both on an individual basis uh, in one-to-one -one therapy and also teaching classes. So I was teaching classes for patients with depression, anxiety, and chronic pain. And now working with chronic pain was especially important at the time, uh, given the, the national opioid epidemic and the prescription drug abuse and high numbers of overdoses and accidental deaths. Um, so nationally clinics and doctors were being told to reduce their opioid prescriptions and to reduce their, um, their dosages uh, below 120 MED. So this resulted in a big need for alternative forms of chronic pain management. So in fact, many of the doctors were left scrambling, not knowing what to offer their patients instead of the medication. So in my classes for chronic pain, uh, I was seeing a lot of really good results. In fact, I was tracking the results through a small pilot study that I was doing for eight weeks. And so I was tracking um, <clears throat> changes in stress and well-being and chronic pain. And I discovered that at the end of the eight weeks or over the eight weeks that uh, people were making big changes. And one thing that I really appreciated with being able to offer these classes was as others on the panel have mentioned, uh, empowering patients to really uh, take more responsibility for their own health and healing and to be able to learn practices that they can take home to then practice themselves. And also that these practices can be used in conjunction with the conventional treatments that they were getting through their other doctors. So a big thing uh, that I was teaching and that was making such a difference is, was for people to just come back to their bodies and to stop running from their pain, their emotional and physical pain, but to come back and to be in their bodies. So that life force energy can flow more freely. So I then um, sent out the data to an outside organization to have it scored. And so that when the scores came back, um, I then shared those with upper management and they were very impressed with, with the results. And so became very supportive in my being able to continue to teach these classes. So that's what I'm still doing and I, I love it. So um, I'd like to just share one quote of uh, a 15 year old in one of my classes. And then before I do that, um, I do really want to give a, a quick plug for the, um, this event that I'm very excited about, which is for healthcare professionals. And it's on July 30th and 31st. And Ming Tong is coming back to Petaluma to, uh, to offer that event there. So um, also uh, continuing education credits will be available for uh, professionals, for health, 
healthcare professionals. So you can check on the, the, the website. So I'm excited about that. So the, the quote um, is from a 15 year old teenager who was in my first Qigong class. And she came with her mother and she was suffering from severe depression, uh, eating disorder, and very difficult body image. Um, she didn't want to be in the class. She didn't want to be in the class at all, but her mother kept just bringing her every week. And she would sit there, do the practices, and not talk at all. She really kept herself to herself. And then um, I had people uh, complete several self-report questionnaires. And on one of the questionnaires, I asked for them to describe in their own words what changes were happening. So I was quite surprised to read in the second to last class that um, this teenager said, I feel as if the darkness in my body is fading, like if my anger is disappearing. And then in the last class, she said, today I had knee pain and it went away as soon as we did the bending spine practice. I feel connected with my body. I've learned to accept all good and bad in my body, and I feel amazing. Nice. So that's very moving to me. So that's where I'll end my five minutes Thank or more. You. Thank you, everyone. Christopher? Last but not least, or I like to say last and everlasting. So, um, I also met Ming Tang at a coffee shop. He does, he does some of his best business in coffee shops and restaurants, you know. Yeah. When, when I, uh, we're neighbors and I first <laughs> saw him and I saw this giant glass of a triple cap cappuccino and I'm like, oh, that's why he's smiling all the time. It's all that coffee. No, no I think you were drinking tea. Anyway, um, after about 25 years kind of in both worlds of emergency medicine, search and rescue, I got to see firsthand what doesn't work. And I think the, the gift in that or the, the strength that we can learn from what's not working now, not as a judgment, not as a wrong or right, good or bad, but what works is that our current system is terminal. <laughs> and. Um, it's time for us to be empowered and choose something more because we deserve more. We deserve to, to thrive, like Sedina said. So a couple of the things that I learned, especially traveling around the world, uh, working in Peru, one of the things I was seeing hundreds of people a day and I couldn't communicate because I didn't know Spanish, so I had interpreters. And the night before, I just had a huge feast and ate everything, which I probably shouldn't have, and my digestive system did not like that. So I woke up in the morning with just coming out both ends, and I said, oh my God, how am I going to help all these people today? And one of the greatest tools was just to get out of my own way and say, I'm here to serve. So I think that's one of the greatest tools that I've learned to assist people is, how can I serve you? There's so many different paths. If you're on medication, if you're going through surgery, if you're wanting to choose a different route, how can I serve you? Uh, not judging it as wrong or right, but what's going to work for you? And so service, you know, whenever we're going through suffering or pain or challenges, really to get out and say, how can I serve someone else? So giving, serving, and loving, like you said, coming from the heart. I mean, I think that was a beautiful just metaphor for really getting out of our heads and reconnecting with the emperor inside. Um, you know, Hippocrates, who is the father of modern medicine, said it's the natural forces within that are the greatest healers and physicians. And so many other amazing, smart people like Einstein said, look deep into nature, you know, for the, for the greatest healer. So, you know, our current healthcare system is terminal, but it's in a chrysalis. It's it has to emerge from its emergency to emerging to something 
better, and it's up to us to actually choose it, uh, to be empowered and say that, yes, let me, how can I take back and amplify the innate wisdom healing that comes from within? And one of the things I love with working with people, you know, as a chiropractor and coach is, you know, if people come in with pain, you know, our system now is really about how can we fight it, get rid of it, numb it out, not really look at the medicinal medicine in that. And that just, not wrong, not right, not judging, but, you know, whenever you're in a war against something or fear against something, it just causes the nervous system to go into that survival fight or flight response. And it shuts down our evolved brain, it shuts down healing, puts, puts it on the back burner, so to speak. So it's really hard to survive and, you know, when we're in that survival mode. So how do we get to thriving? Really is to embrace those things that are coming up in us, the pain, the discomfort, the challenge, um, so that we can get the message and actually, because the, the message is the innate wisdom from within is trying to direct us back on track to follow our heart's desire to align with our highest choice. Um, so I'll end with another quote. I'm a quote man, so I try to memorize them all, but forgive me if I stumble on this one. But um, it was Voltaire that said, the art of healing consists in amusing the patient while nature does the, heal while nature does the cure. So again, it's all about these tools that we can use, like Qigong, Two of the first books when I went into chiropractic school, I said, give me everything I can learn about alternative healing that comes from within. And two books fell off, literally jumped off the bookshelf. One was called The Reconnection, which is really about reconnecting your innate wisdom. And the other one was Qigong. So I was like, perfect, okay. So again, just coming back to Qigong is such a beautiful way. Um, take your shoes off, earth. It's so cheap, it's free. <laughs> And then adding Qigong, really getting into those natural forces can do the greatest healing. And our, our greatest weakness shall be, not could be or will be, it shall be our greatest strength. So that's where we're at right now, is turning this weakness into our greatest strength. So thank you. Thank you.